Welcome to the dark side of gaming. On this episode, I'll be talking about a game that causes offence by its name alone. That's right, I'm talking about the video game, Ethnic Cleansing. Buckle up, because this is going to be a deep dive into everything I know about this infamous title, the gameplay, the backlash, and why it was wrong. Deep breath everyone, here we go. Now, for those who might not be familiar, which I assume is almost everybody watching this video, Ethnic Cleansing was published in 2002 by a group called Resistance Records, a label associated with white supremacist ideology. It was developed by the National Alliance, an American white supremacist and neo-Nazi organization. The premise? It's a first-person shooter game that puts players in the shoes of a character whose objective is to eliminate individuals from specific ethnic backgrounds. Yes, you heard that right. The game's very concept is rooted in hate, and it shrouds itself in a veneer of absurdity and controversy. The player controls one of three selectable characters, including a Ku Klux Klan member and a neo-Nazi skinhead, and traverses two levels to kill stereotypically depicted African Americans, Latinos, and Jews. The game was released on Martin Luther King Jr. Day 2002. It was received negatively by anti-hate organisations like the Anti-Defamation League and has been considered as one of the most controversial and most racist games to ever exist. The gameplay itself is shockingly simplistic. Players navigate a virtual setting armed with weapons that can target people depicted as different ethnicities, primarily focusing on African Americans and various other ethnic groups. The so-called enemies in the game are described as predatory subhumans, with Jewish masters. One scenario sees the player enter the subway outlined as the hideout of Jews seeking world domination. The final boss is Ariel Sharon, then Prime Minister of Israel, who attacks the player with a rocket launcher. What really gets to the core of the issue is not just the mechanics, but the motivations behind this game's creation. What makes ethnic cleansing particularly alarming is not just that it exists, it's the potently hate-fueled ideology it promotes. Even in the gaming world, the line between fantasy and reality can get blurry, but usually just that. Games are often detached from real-world implications. With a game like this one, it's the shocking embrace of overt racism that draws a direct line into real-life hatred and violence. At its launch, ethnic cleansing garnered backlash from across the globe. Rightfully condemned by anti-hate groups, it was labelled as a means of normalising violence against marginalised communities. Activists and gaming critics alike not only criticised the game for its content, but also highlighted the disturbing trend of using digital media as a vehicle for spreading hate. In fact, the backlash was so fierce that the issues surrounding the game were raised in the Supreme Court of Justice. A bill titled Games Elevate Hate to the Next Level stated that hate groups were increasingly using racist and anti-Semitic video games to recruit younger people. This particular game was used as an example of a game that was being studied by these radical groups. Abraham Foxman, the national director of the ADL, stated, These games use modern technology to seduce young people who are attracted to video games and they steer them towards bigotry, prejudice and anti-Semitism. They piggyback on the popularity of games and are a perversion of well-meaning entertainment. In a response to this and all of the backlash that the game faced, white supremacist World of the Creator Church leader Matt Hale stated that the games were good propaganda because they appealed to younger people, and this made his group appear more mainstream. The publication The Record interviewed several young men who identified as white nationalists, and they found the game to be in bad taste and potentially harmful for their movement due to the violence it depicts. In a retrospective for Vice, it was noted that the game itself is so tragic in terms of execution that even neo-Nazis would not want to play it. Ethnic Cleansing has been ranked among the most controversial video games by PC World in 2010, GameZone in 2012, PC Mag in 2014, and The Escapist in 2015. Additionally, Ethnic Cleansing is explicitly prohibited to be shown on Twitch. In conclusion, while Ethnic Cleansing may seem like just a video game to some, the repercussions of its existence echo far beyond its digital confines. It's a reminder of the fine line we walk in engaging with media and the power we wield as consumers to shape the narrative that fill our screens. Thank you for watching. Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you on the next episode of The Dark Side of Gaming.